Hey everyone, I'm Parker, co-founder of Deco Exchange. Ever been told that crafting is just a hobby? Well, we've turned our passion for crafting into a thriving eight-figure business, surrounded ourselves with an incredible community, and learned countless valuable lessons along the way. From navigating business challenges to celebrating wins, we've seen firsthand that makers need business. Join me as we dive deep into these stories, strategies, and secrets behind making your craft a successful enterprise. Because here at Makers Mean Business, we're all about proving that makers aren't just making, they're building dreams and running businesses. What is going on, you guys? It is Parker here with the Makers Mean Business podcast. We're back for another episode. And actually, we're actually back for another series. I really enjoyed the last series. I definitely hadn't recorded anything in a while, and I spoke with our podcast manager, and I've got some ideas going forward, and I'm hoping to continually improve the podcast. So if you guys have any feedback, anything you want to hear, anything like that, feel free to let us know. You can shoot me an email or head over to makersmeanbusiness.com and and give us some feedback that way. If you're loving the podcast, y'all do us a favor and leave us a review. Our reviews are low, honestly, on the different platforms. So if you're listening to this and you enjoy it, you enjoy me, my soothing voice, the content, any of the above. I know some people are are very particular about how much I say y'all. So (laughs) whatever it is, you can feel free to leave us a review. It really helps us out. Y'all, I have another seven part series coming up. I think I'm going to leave the the full outline out and you'll have to check the next week's episode. I'll definitely mention what next week is going to be at the end of the episode, Um, but I don't want to lock myself down. Um, I, I kind of work best with less structure. I definitely need a, a, a decent outline, but I, I don't want to, I guess, tie myself down because then I feel like I have to do specific things. And sometimes if things just don't, they don't feel right or they don't come organically, it just doesn't feel authentic to me. So I'm going to leave a loose outline. We'll go with that. As far as the series, that part's set in stone, y'all. I'm going to be covering live selling. It's something we've been doing a lot of. If you've been following Deco Exchange for a while, we just do a ton of live sales. It works so well for a lot of different reasons. And and we'll get into that on today's episode. It's going to be all about the introduction to live selling and, and why we do it, why it works, why it's good. I'll talk a little bit about the different platforms where you can live sell. And then I'll give you some just basic information, maybe some, it won't be a full supply list, but some things maybe to make sure that you have when you're going into your first live. So why live sale? Y'all, there's, there's so many reasons why to live sale. It's creating live video baked in with selling your product. A lot of you guys might be thinking, oh, I don't have a big community or, oh, I'm scared of the camera or, oh, I don't know what I'm doing or, oh, I've never done it before. All of that's fine. Y'all, all of that is totally fine. Just a a little rule of thumb, done is better than perfect. I've lived that with our entire business. I continue to live that today. If I waited for all the stars to align for every single thing to just be exactly the way it quote unquote needs to be or should be, I wouldn't be sitting here recording today. I wouldn't be running the business that we run now. I wouldn't be doing all the things that we're doing in our business because the reality is things are just never perfect. So don't let that get in the way. If you have other things that get in your way, that's fine, but don't psych yourself out about it. Like I was saying, being able to directly communicate with your customer, even if they're not going to buy from you that day, just building the know, like, and trust factor that I know we've talked about before, getting yourself out in front of people, getting your product out in front of people, even if you don't make a sale on that video All of those things are still things you should be doing in your business anyway. So if you keep that in mind when you're creating content or when you're recording, going live, talking, whatever it is on the live sale, it's just a really great way all around to engage with your customer. You get a ton of feedback. You get a ton of chances to, I prefer to banter. I prefer to read comments and interact in real time. I think that's why a lot of people who watch live video like to watch live because they feel like they're a part of something happening now, obviously. So I I think that's a really great reason to be doing that as well. For us, it's also a really great way. I know I mentioned it just now, but to get your product out there, you're on video, you're posting on social media of some sort. I'll talk a little bit about the different platforms here in a minute, but you're feeding those algorithms. You're feeding that content out on the social media, which you should be doing anyway. You should be posting, you should be doing live video of some sort. You should be doing all kinds of stuff on social media. And y'all, I say need to, but you should be doing that to grow your business. It's just a really great way to be doing that. 
And creating that content while also showing off your product, it's killing two birds with one stone, right? You're telling people, hey, I have stuff available, but you're also showing them. You're also letting them know that you're, the product is real. You're letting them know that you're real. You're letting them know that you care. You're letting them know all the ways that you could be using your product. There's so many different things that you could be doing on that video and so many reasons why it's a, a great thing to do. Another big reason, or probably the last reason I want to cover today, is it gives the people watching a chance to, I don't want to say make an impulse buy because I feel like that sounds slimy, but the, the point I'm trying to get is it gives people who want something a chance to instantly get that thing. In the year 2024, people, uh, I'm going to call it TikTok brain, I've heard it, I've heard it a bunch of different places. People have way shorter attention spans than what they've used to what they've used to have. And it gives those people who want something a chance to just instantly buy it. I've seen people using different types of live selling software, but most of them, you can let the customer check out and commit to purchasing something directly on the video. They don't have to click out. They don't have to go to some website. They can just put something in the comments and it just assigns that item to that person. It's a really great way to facilitate the way that customers want to shop right now. They don't want to go click into another website. They don't want to have to find that thing that you're showing. They can just on the video make a purchase. And I think that's probably one of the strongest cases for live selling and why it just works so well. Moving on and shifting gears here, y'all, I want to talk a little bit about the platforms. Social media is ever growing, ever changing. We live and breathe Facebook. That being said, people are extremely successful on all of the other social media platforms. We've had success live selling on Pinterest Live. It's an exclusive thing that we were testing out, I think about a year ago, maybe a little longer, but it was still making conversions. It was still making sales. We don't do much on Instagram, but you can go live and sell live on Instagram. And y'all, in the last few years, TikTok has just been so popular for all kinds of reasons. There are people who are just killing it on TikTok Live and selling product. And now it's currently March of 2024. There's ways that you can add product to TikTok. There's ways that you can connect your Shopify stores to TikTok. There's ways that you can live sell on TikTok natively on the platform. You can bring up products. You can have them click and check out all on the TikTok Live. And it's just a really cool way. I'll be honest, it's something uh, we do not do a great job with just because we have our, our hands full with other stuff. But I know of multiple other crafters, makers, handmade artisans that are just absolutely killing it. There are people I don't know that I know. I I see their content where they're creating labels and shipping out boxes and all that stuff. And I really don't think that's just vanity videos that they're doing. But I've seen this guy, he's, he's doing like really snarky hats and he's making, it's some kind of leather that heat presses on the hats. I'm not super familiar with the process, but he laser engraves the leather and then some kind of heat seal the leather onto the hat. They're really cool hats. I almost bought one actually, but man, I just see his stuff all the time right around these days, or I see his stuff all around. It's crazy to see, but he's leveraging live video to be showing off what he can make. He can customize it, what he can do. And it's just a frenzy and people are just live shopping in the moment because that's something that's just available to them. Like I was just saying, they don't have to go to a website. They don't have to leave the video. It's such an integrated process where they can watch the video, they can check out, they can place the order, they can do all the things all in the video. And it's just, it's so powerful to have that all in in an all-in-one experience. We see this all the time actually with checking out on, on websites. In my head, I have it broken down into different steps along the checkout process way. You have to get people to the website. You have to get people to click on the product. You have to get people to add it to cart. You have to get people to add their information onto the cart to check out. And then finally, you have to get people to check out. That's a lot of steps. And each step, you lose people along the way. That's just the nature of of e-commerce. With live selling, you just drastically reduce the amount of steps to get someone to check out. And the less clicks, the less steps, the the more you can get people to convert. And that's just super powerful. And you see it with live selling all the time. You know, shifting gears again to the last thing that I wanted to cover on today's episode, preparing for your first live sale. So I know a lot of people, and I'm trying to hit objections because I know everyone's going to say, oh, I can't do this because of X, Y, Z. One thing I know someone's going to say is, oh, I don't have fancy lighting. I don't have a fancy camera. I don't have this. I don't have that. Y'all, you just need your phone. You just need your phone. All you have to do is go live 
and start showing off your product. Is it gonna be perfect? No. Are you gonna have all these fancy systems that invoice people and do all the things? No. But it doesn't have to be that way. Software can get expensive, all the bells and whistles can get expensive, but a live sale can just be you going live and showing your product and telling people where to check out. You don't have to do all of these things to make it work. You don't have to have everything perfect. And that's, if, if you take anything away from this episode, take away that you don't have to have all the things to do something. You don't have to have the stars aligned. You don't have to have all the things perfect. You can just turn on the camera, go live on Facebook, go live on Instagram, go live on the TikTok and say, hey, I've got this really awesome product. Here's what you can do with it. Here's why you want it. And here's where you can get it. And that's a live sale. You do not have to do comments sold. You do not have to do all the things. Is that something you should shoot for and eventually work towards? Absolutely, you should. Absolutely, you should because it works and it's great. I want to challenge all of you guys listening today, all of you ladies, all of you guys, all of you people, all of you makers, whatever you are. If you have a product to sell, go live and show someone and tell them what it is, how they can get it, why it's great, why it means a lot to you, why you did it anything. Just start sharing who you are, what you have, and how to get it. Are you going to have a lot of people watching you the first time you do that? If it's your first time, no. Y'all, I have live sales all the time that, that, that don't meet my expectations. It's not really a matter of doing it once and being done. It's a matter of getting better each time. It's a matter of consistency. It's a matter of showing up. And y'all, I know <laughs> some of you guys might be listening to the episode and think, oh, you don't always do podcasts. So what do you have to say about consistency? Look on our Facebook page and we are consistently selling. And that's honestly, at the end of the day, that's what matters most is we are generating revenue for the business so that it can continue doing the things that it's supposed to be doing. We're continuing to get our product out in front of people. We're continuing to get our product in people's hands and we're continuing to deliver on all those things. So y'all, with that being said, I want to wrap up episode one. We covered why to live sell the different platforms that you can live sell on and how to prepare for your first live sale and the things that you need to get started. I'm absolutely going to be going into more detail on different softwares, on different technology, on different lighting, all the things. I know that's going to be hard to talk about on a podcast, but what I'll probably end up doing is just covering a kind of beginner's guide and just linking you guys over in the Makers Mean Business website on some things that you could use if you want to invest a little bit to get started. Y'all, next episode... I'm going to be talking about how to plan your live sale. Um, I'm going to share a little bit of suggestions on what you need or what you should think about, maybe some goals that you should set. One thing I really like to to do on our live sales, and if you've ever seen, if you've ever seen me live sale, I'm a lot more structured than probably other people selling on the page, but If you haven't seen me, you can download the Deco Exchange app. It's on the Apple App Store, the Google Play Store. But I like to set goals. I like to have a general idea of what I'm going to do, what I'm going to show, what the purpose is. And then I also like to do some promotion on the back end. So I'm going to be talking about how to plan out a little bit of your live sale. Y'all, if you like this episode or if you like this podcast in general, make sure you leave us a review. Make sure you subscribe. You can uh, check out all of our other episodes on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast. Until next time, y'all.